Hey, what's happening YouTube? Well, today starts a big change. Getting rid of my old inverter setup, <clears throat> and we're changing it out to something new. Now, what I've got here, I've been running it for a very long time. <clears throat> I'd say probably eight years or so. And it's been working. I don't have any complaints. It just, I go through batteries. Go through regular lead acid batteries, about a year they'll last me. I go through AGM batteries for my inverter every two years. Now this is a starting battery made by Optima. As you can see, that's 2013. And uh, it still works great. Now this is just what we would call the starting battery. My house batteries are in the back. But I just wanted to show you what my system looked like before I changed it. Nothing special. I got a constant duty relay right here. <clears throat> I upgraded my alternator wire to some 4 gauge because the factory wire in there was not uh, really not up to the task. Uh, got some big fuses and um, yeah, big fat heavy cables running back to my house batteries. And then that goes under the vehicle on the frame. And then comes up in here. I got my two batteries. Got a big 3,000 watt inverter, 6,000 peak. And yeah, this is what's been running my rig daily for years. Uh, most of the charging is done by the truck's alternator. Uh, when I come home on the weekends, I just plug it in. I've got two separate chargers. This one does the AGMs, this one does the starting battery up in the front. And it's been working. So now we're going to switch this out. Here we're going to go to lithium iron phosphate. All right, guys. Here we are the next day. I had to. I didn't get finished till late. Completely redid everything. Got rid of the constant duty solenoid. We put just put the fuse here now. And this is going to the back. And I got my trigger wire for the. DC to DC charger but I did run into a bit of a hiccup <clears throat> so this is what it looks like now I've got both batteries in here the other ones underneath my tools over there but they're both here got a total of 400 amp hours and the thing that I ran into the problem I ran into was I didn't do the math properly and you would this thing charges at 60 amps so I didn't take into account that it also boosts the voltage up to 14.6 volts because that's what I have it set at right now so in order to boost the voltage up to the 14.6 it requires more amperage so even though it's putting out 60 amps to the batteries it was consuming 85 amps so that's way too much for my truck to run um, because that only leaves uh, 15 amps available to run the truck and recharge the starting battery and it simply wasn't enough and this was actually draining the starting battery so luckily with these Renogy chargers they have a port over here it's called LC it's labeled LC and what that does is that drops the charging current down to half. So it cuts it down to 30 amps charging volt amperage and drops the voltage down to, I want to say it was 35 or 40 amps, which makes it a lot more sustainable. So that's great. The way I'm going to fix this is there's an upgrade you can do on these older Chevys. You can do it on the uh, 4.3 Vortec, or you can do it on the, uh, the uh, I think it's the 5.3 V8. Because they got the whole thing, they're the same engine. So the whole accessory drive and everything is the same. And what the upgrade is you can do is from the factory, these trucks, you could have it with the upgraded alternator package. So stock, I've got a 105 amp alternator. And the upgrade package 
upgrades it to a, a 40 amp alternator. Now everything I've seen online says it bolts right up. My uh, connection, four pin connection will click right in in the back. The only thing, <clears throat> sorry, the only thing I'm going to have to do is get the larger belt, which I already ordered with the alternator. Now the other upgrade I'm going to have to do is this is four gauge wire here, but oh, it's kind of hard to see. Can't really see it, but it's it's 105C rated. So what that means is that wire can safely handle um, 100 amps. But it's not going to be able to handle 140 amps. So what I've already ordered some one aught wire. That way, I know I'm covered. So I'm gonna run a one aught from there to the battery with the fuse in between. You gotta have a fuse, guys, because I forget what failure it is, but there's a failure that can happen inside the alternator. I believe it's something like if the windings dead short together or something with the case then you'll have a dead short from battery to alternator and that's going to start a fire so you have to have a fuse in between your alternator and the battery but for now while i'm waiting on that to come uh you know i've got got it dumbed down to 30 amps charge back there and i wanted to show you guys uh what you're going to have to do to figure out how much load you have available on your alternator in other words how much when your vehicle is running and you need to have it running in a way that would consume the most amount of power so your headlights on you know windshield wipers your ac going all the loads that you would have in normal driving situations then take your readings and then that'll tell you how much room you have left available with your alternator for charging so i'm gonna go ahead and pause this start it up and we'll do that all right guys it might be a little bit noisy but as you can see the alternator is putting out right around 60 amps i got everything on i've got my headlights on got the ac wide open windshield wipers everything like if i was driving probably in a rainstorm so catch the water right here all right as you can see most of that load is going right towards the truck running okay so let's let's cut a couple things off all right now we cut a couple things back right about 35 amps all I did was I turned the AC down to low it's still on I cut off the windshield wipers headlights are still going so I would say this is a pretty normal load here and this is what you're going to have to figure out on your in particular vehicle I don't know where exactly your wire is going to be but you're going to have a wire that goes from your battery over to your main fuse panel and that's what runs everything <clears throat> so that's what you're going to have to figure out so you see that's why i assumed you know the charger drawing 60 amps i figured it was going to be right around 90 amps 90 95 so i figured okay my alternator will be able to do that but now that i see how much it's drawing Obviously, I can't do that with a 100 amp alternator, so I got to upgrade to the 140 amp. So let's go ahead and see. I got the DC to DC charger set to um, 30 amps. Let's see what it's drawing when I kick it on. All right, as you can see, we got 34 amps going back to the batteries back there. And that's set on... 30 amp charge rate so what do we got going on here at idle showing 75 okay 35 and no 
depends on what you know is cycling there uh, the compressor cycling so that's going to change so we're pretty much maxed out right now on the 30 amp charge rate but that's okay I got a new one coming in the mail so check it back here Let's see it says 37 36 then you put it on the output see we're right at 30 so the amperage is a little bit lower coming out but that's because the voltage is higher but that's it guys this is the video just showing my new rig um, I really like these batteries uh, they say they're 200 amp hours they are true 200 amp hours but I did do a test just because I was curious so this battery I went ahead and tested the where the low voltage cutoff cuts off at and it cuts off at 9.8 volts and when I recharged it again I lost a half of an amp hour worth of capacity now that's not really um, you know it doesn't really add up to much but I think it does go to prove that discharging it too low does cause damage which we know that now um, and like I said my inverter cuts off at 10.6 so I'm never going to have to worry about uh, discharging these things too low um, I wish that since it's Bluetooth enabled, I can access all the. I can actually turn off charging, turn on charging. I can disconnect the batteries uh, from load from the Bluetooth. I wish they would upgrade it so I could kind of set that voltage disconnect up a bit. I really don't like it that it disconnects at 9.8 uh, volts. I'd rather I'd rather step that up a bit, maybe like 10.3 or something. Uh, maybe they'll do an upgrade in the future, an update, and you'll be able to do that. I have tested the high voltage cutoff. It does work. Everything works like it's supposed to. So uh, these were Amazon batteries, and um, I, I think they're worth every penny. I, I said in previous videos they were, I paid $220 something. I paid $270 something uh, per battery. But at the end of the day, that's still cheaper than going with a Optima Yellow Top Deep Cycle AGM. And you're going to get way more performance out of these, I guarantee it. So the next video I got coming up, uh, like I promised, we're going to go and we're going to do some experimenting on my old AGMs. Because they're junk. <coughs> they're over here, my interstate batteries. They're down to 15 amp hours a piece of capacity, which is trash. Um, and later I'm gonna do a little update video on this. I've just been experimenting with this little battery just because I can. Now that battery was flat, absolutely flat. I recharged it with a smart charger. And when I was done, my test meter said that it was uh, just complete trash it was uh had about i think it not even one cold cranking amp um i've been doing what i showed on the on the um papers in my previous video about battery charging and i've been charging this at 16 volts at a rate of 10 percent now that's a six amp hour battery so that means 600 milliamps is your charge rate I've done two cycles of I just let it charge for like eight or nine hours and the capacities actually got up to 60 percent and the cold cranking amps is over 50 now and all I've done is is just overcharge the battery at a controlled rate um, it's a AGM battery that was completely dry. I mean, this thing was dry as a popcorn fart. I filled it up. I did not use distilled water. I used reverse, reverse osmosis water, which they say is the same quality. 
and obviously it is because it's working just fine um, so I'm gonna run this thing through another cycle and we're gonna see if I can get any more capacity out of it if I can I'm just gonna keep doing this cycle over and over what I do is I charge it for eight or nine hours then I just disconnect it and let it rest the rest of the day I come back again the next day slap it back on so I'll let you guys know what the end result is but I have turned that battery from a completely stone dead useless battery into an actual useful battery again just goofing around so I think there might be some validity to all this stuff I've been reading reading and I've showed you guys about equalized charge and all that other stuff and we're going to try it out on these two batteries and we'll see how it goes.